From Field Pass Hockey Southern Command, this is the Inside the SPHL Podcast. Here is your host, James Hayes. Welcome to this week's episode of Inside the SPHL. I am your host, James Hayes, back for another exciting exciting episode i got a guest for you and do a little bit of talking about some of the things going around the league but as always we're going to jump into the guests so my guest spent three years in columbus with the cotton mouse before moving on to become a birmingham bowl and he spent his last few years of playing the game as a bowl his final season he got the c on his chest and then he jumped right into coaching currently entering his fourth season in coaching third as a head coach and the way he got to be a head coach is going to be interesting we're going to talk about that as well and uh so without further ado if you haven't figured it out already my guest this week is head coach of the birmingham bulls craig simchuk craig welcome to the show man thanks for joining us oh my pleasure thanks for having me yeah definitely i've been trying to bring coaches in i never brought a coach on at all last off se- or last season when i was doing this so i'm trying to get coaches in during the off season because you guys are still working the players are out oh well, they're probably working but they're not they're not as easy to get a hold of and people like to hear from you guys i assume yeah they're not working as hard as us i'll tell you that <laughs> no no that's right well, it's good it's good to talk to you cuz uh i mean you, you promised a few things this summer you said you'd take me out fishing and <laughs> this is the first time we're connecting, so yeah, 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 yeah. My my bad, my bad, man. I'm sorry about that. I did, I oh, did. I, I, I'll, I'll, we'll still go. We'll still go. I got time. Yeah, yeah. We still got we got a little off season time to go. Yeah, that's right. The first time you hear from me after I said I'm going to take you fishing is, hey man, you want to come on the podcast? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. My bad. We'll get that. We'll get that organized. We'll get that. I've been having technical difficulties this summer, so <laughs> but uh, that's the excuse I'm using, anyways. Yeah, that's all right. as long as you stick to it, you're good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As long as the story stays consistent, <laughs> but uh, but again, so I mean, it's been a busy off season for you. We'll start. We're we're going to work our way backwards. We're going to talk about this off season right off the bat. I mean, you are bringing in player names. Um, you're bringing back a lot of guys that came in late last year, getting out of college and stuff. I mean, and and you're bringing in guys that uh, I don't think a lot of people thought. I know I didn't think they were going to end up being bulls. You know, you got Stefan Timofeyev, which I kind of felt, you know, me and I think everybody else, he was going to be an ice bear. Uh, the captain of the ice bears is now going to be a Birmingham Bulls and Stefan Bricado and just just all the signings that have been coming on. I mean, you can kind of see and you can tell me this has kind of been my idea is it seems like there's somewhat of a youth movement coming into Birmingham, whereas last year there was a lot more veteran players and stuff. And this year, not to say that you don't have I mean Mike Davis is still back. You still got guys with experience, but is that kind of what's going on? Is it's kind of kind of changing into more of a, a youth type movement? Somewhat for for sure. We we definitely brought in a, a lot of guys last year, the college players that ended their college careers and um, we're bringing a lot of those guys back. But um, we really felt we want not just veteran players, but the right veteran players and, and good core leadership. Um, so that's why we're bringing back like guys, like you said, Mike Davis and um, some of these older guys. And you yeah, added the name Stefan Bricado, who's been around the league for, for a while. And we want to build around a solid core with good young guys. So um, right now I, we're, we, we love our mix of players that we've, we've signed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and, and it seems, I mean, the identity of this team's, always been you know we're we're gonna we're gonna go out and we're gonna score we're gonna we're gonna have the skill and we're gonna we'll we'll punch you in the mouth I guess for a lack of better word you're gonna be a physical team I mean is that still kind of the identity of the team moving forward for you guys this year yes and no like you obviously want a high octane offense like the the game of hockey's changed drastically from the last 20 years like there's not the big tough guys in beat you up the broad street bullies. So um, we're, we're kind of veering for, we want guys that compete on a nightly basis. So every day, every day of practice in the, on the ice, in the, in the weight room, wherever it is, guys that are, are hungry and, and want to make the jump to the next level. So um, I, I really do believe that we have guys that are, um, that just work at, and mix with skill. It's a pretty deadly combination. 
Yeah. I mean, I think the model for a hockey team in general right now is the Colorado Avalanche model. Now, you know, you got skill players everywhere and then you got defensemen. I mean, guys like, you know, everybody's looking for their next Kale McCarr at every level of hockey. And, and, and you've brought on some defensemen that, that produce offensively and are good in their own zone. I've, I've noticed. And so uh, are we going to see maybe some defensemen stepping up into the play uh, this season? Is that, is that part of the game plan? Can I, can I tell all the other coaches what your game plan is right here on, on the podcast? Hey, yeah, you can tell them. <laughs> anyway, I think I think that's our game plan. <laughs> you can plan all you want, but uh, <laughs> if it actually happens, is is another story. But right, um, no, that that's something that we, especially with Kevin Kerr, we really preach is is getting that those defense up in the play and becoming the fourth and fifth attacker, and um, it, it's a five man unit on the ice. So we the we really went after some guys that. Are on our back end that can skate, have offensive mindset, but at the same time will defend well and, and keep the pocket of our zone and our net. Right, right. I got you. So um, another thing we're going to talk about here that I want to bring up is, is there something going on in Birmingham that uh, do you guys have like some kind of connection to the NHL? Because this is two years in a row that you've sent a goaltender to the Columbus Blue Jackets camp. I am counting Evan Moyes as a guy you sent because he was a bull. And now you got Hayden Stewart up there. I mean, what are, you got a direct line up there in Columbus? You're like, hey, man, I got this goalie. He can go up there and play. Is it, what, what's going on with that, man? Uh, I, I wish I did. Uh, maybe I could pull some strings to get myself up there, but no. Uh, That's right. Um, no, uh, if I'm so happy for Stewie. And um, w- when I heard the news, he called me one day and he's like, I'm going to Columbus. And I thought, like, like down the road, Columbus, Georgia. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And then he's like, no, the Blue Jackets. I'm like, wow, you're just skipping a few leagues. So um, I would know. I never, I still yet to receive a call from the Blue Jackets, but. Uh, they reached out to Stewie. They did all the the paperwork and talked to him and got him all squared away. But uh, must I, be I'm his, excited for him. It must be his Ivy League connections that he's getting in there with. Then that's what it is. He's going over everybody's head with all those smart Ivy League folks. <laughs> I, I see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's exactly it. But uh, well, he 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 deserves it more than uh, anyone I know. So um, I, I don't know the logistics. But the funny thing is, they have. Uh, Corpus Allo up there and that's Stewie's favorite goalie so they're going to be on the same ice and and he's so excited about it so I'm I'm happy for him yeah yeah that's good I mean it's it's going to be a great experience and and some knowledge that uh if they don't end up signing him right that he can bring back down here so so that'll that'll be good last time the last time he went up two years ago to Cleveland uh in the AHL he came back and just his the little habits he picked up, his preparation, his style that he was doing or putting the work in after, because he saw it, what it takes to play at those levels, and um, he it really translated. He he took it all to heart, and um, he he's been doing it ever since. That's great. That's great. So, and you also brought back Austin Lotz. So the dynamic duo is back. And 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 I've always kind of said Birmingham is a one A one B kind of goaltending situation. There's really no solid backup. And the way you do it, usually last year is you even the work workload out. Is, is that probably going to be the plan moving forward this year too? Is just kind of give them rest and on the back to backs or the three nights or or uh, or you just is, is that I guess still one A one B. I guess that's my question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is. And that's, it's a, once again, it's a good problem to have because um, especially last year, I I really, they're they're our backbone of our team. They kept us in a lot of games. And, and besides that, the, the quality of people they are, um, two of the best leaders people I've ever met in my life. So um, we're thrilled to to have them back or possibly have them both back. So, um, but as for playing, they, they're both competitive. They push each other, but at the same time, they're rooting each other on. They're, they're best friends. They'll call each other after every game, um, go over to each other's apartments and, and just watch the game. Oh, I shouldn't have let that one in or nice save, wh- whatever it is. But they're, they're so supportive, and they're, they're a great tandem to have here. That's great. That's, that's, that's hard to find in goaltenders. I mean, usually, you know, the, the, you got your starter and your backup, and, and they're – you know the starter's not going to communicate as well with the backup because he doesn't want to lose his job, right? Exactly. So, uh, but, but it's good. That's another trend that's kind of changing too across the the hockey sphere. Is is two number one goaltenders really? I mean, you see it at, at almost every level now, and 
So, so it's good. It's definitely good to have because you know on a bad night because I know Lotzi had a couple injuries last year and and you knew Stewie could just step right in. So that's that's got to be like you said a good problem to have. Yeah, and it's one of those things like it, it's a the rotation we have. They they both enjoy it. Um, we'll, we'll tell them in advance, and they they know the system we run, and um, it's they they we don't have to call them and tell them oh you're starting tonight or anything. They they already know. And um, they're 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 good with it. We're not going to kill anyone or gas anyone, um, tire them out for the stretch. So um, I, I think it's a good rotation, and uh, we're, we're hoping to do the, continue that this year. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk a little bit about uh, let's moving backwards now. Let's kind of talk about your coaching. So you had a tough COVID season. We won't dig too deep into that, but and then that was kind of that was kind of the beginning for you in in the head coaching spot. And, but kind of tell me about how that came about because I I see these coaches getting hired here late in the season right now. And I just think back to your situation and they have a little bit, I mean, they don't have a lot of time, but they have less time. So kind of, kind of walk, walk me and and the listeners through, you know, how that all came about and, and just the preparation time you had to, to get into being the head coach. So, once COVID hit, um, I think it was March 15th, 2020, the SP finally uh, shut her down. And um, I ended up going back home for that summer. And there were there was so much unknown, unknown if there was going to be hockey and at what capacity, if, if the SP is going or if they're not, if the NA. And so I didn't really hear much. It was kind of on the, on the outside. And um, at that time, I was still an assistant coach and I kind of thought like, you know, if there's a financial burden, I might be the the first position to go as an assistant coach. So um, I, I didn't really, I, I didn't know what to expect. And um, I actually started training, started playing men's league back home and um, getting, trying to get back into shape in case I, I had us play again. So one day, yeah got a call from uh, Jay Hicks I said he wasn't uh, he, he wasn't returning and we, we talked it out and there's a lot of things going on and um, my, my biggest thing was this concern for for, for him and and everything that, that was going on and um, the owners of Birmingham eventually reached out and we had a good couple of conversations and almost an interview process and there was a few candidates and then uh, they officially named me coach on December first of 2020 and camp was starting on december 17th so i didn't know who was signed i didn't know anything i didn't have any of the contracts or phone numbers or immigration but uh we 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 managed we survived i made it down i made it down about six hours before our first ice time and um i drove straight through from from winnipeg to birmingham no sleep and here we are just, just like that. So you had, uh, you had less than uh, for, from from getting the position to opening night, which I think that year was the day after Christmas, right? The twenty sixth. Right. Yeah. So you had less than a month to plan and and put a team together, and and that was just a crazy league. All that, that the whole league was crazy. There was a lot of guys in the coast playing. You know, guys that there was unbelievable talent in that. Not to say the talents are not on. You know, there's great talent in the league right now. But I mean, you have guys that probably would never play down. You know, Anthony Collins was in Birmingham, and that's a guy that, you know, he's 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 a career coaster. And then uh, Logan Nelson, and so you had all those guys. And so it was just a it was a weird year, and it was like a team of all stars, and uh, and there was going to be one team on, on on the outside looking in, and. Unfortunately, that was how season one went. But kind of tell me from your perspective, subtracting out all the bad things I just said, because you called me out on the fishing thing. So I had to <laughs> throw that in. So, no. But uh, but kind of tell me that season, how when, when the season was over, how did you feel about? I guess, how did you feel about it? How did you feel about your yourself as a coach and, and moving forward? What? Did, did you learn a lot? I mean, what was your what were your final thoughts when that season closed out? You know, it, it was it was it was a great year, but at the same time, it, it wasn't. Um, we had some of the greatest people, and I still talk to a lot of those players today. And like you said, a lot of them 
probably in a normal year if COVID didn't happen, you would never see him at, at this level. And and that, like you said, it goes across the board uh, for for every team. But um, I I learned a lot from them. I I, I kind of learned a lot by being thrown into the fire from just league logistics and day to day ops, but um, so much of the game and so much how differently guys at the higher level see the game um, and, and just creating contacts and talking to, like I said, talking to AHL GMs. I would have never thought I would be talking to an AHL GM out, out of the gate. So um, I, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I felt a lot more comfortable um, in my second year, just having a year under your belt, which which is pretty normal. So um, I hope this year's even just builds off that confidence for, for myself individually. Yeah. So, I mean, like, so last year was the first real year you had as a head coach too. I mean, because the, the COVID year, it was a shortened season. It was, you know, five teams. And so last year you got, uh, it was closer to real. There still was not a lot of Northern travels, but, uh, yeah. but yeah. So at, last year it, it was, it was a really up and down season. It, it, you guys were, you guys would play really well for a couple of weeks and then there'd just be really bad games put together. And, and then later on in the season, Kerr came in and tell me what, what that meant to you. I mean, I know Kerr's been a head coach. I know, you know, everybody knows he's been a head coach and, and he came in in this role. And I mean, just learning from somebody like him and like, what did that mean to you whenever he came in into the team? Well, me, me and Kersey never, we always respected each other. Um, we, we coached against each other that COVID year, but I, I played against um, him when he p- coached Macon and we always uh, joked around or talked after the game and had mutual respect for each other. And um, knowing that he was available and that we had the opportunity to, to bring him in, um, I think it was a no brainer. And the, the guy is a hockey guru in the sense of he knows every person there is to, in the game of hockey. He, he's obsessed with hockey. Um, he thinks about it 24 seven and, um, and, and he's, he's, it's, it's always good to have an older mentor that's been there, been through it and, um, and then to help me through it. So it, it's been a, it's been a great combo so far and, and we're going to continue it this year. It seems too like from my perspective, cause you know, I know everything cause I write about the games and, and I, and I talk about them. So obviously I'm an expert it seems like when he came in, just that extra help. I mean, one guy can't coach a whole team by himself. And so it just seems like that extra help, you could kind of tell a difference in, in just on the ice. It just seemed like things were, you know, all the workload wasn't pushed on you. And it seemed like things were coming together because game results, I mean, the, the, the game results were getting a little bit better there towards the end of the season. And and there was a chance, there was a shot at one point where I was sitting here thinking, hell, the Bulls are going to end up making that run for that eight spot. Uh, as, but uh, but it, did it kind of do that? Did it kind of relieve some of that pressure? And and because I don't know, I I know the SP normally has, you know, you know, yet one code. It's not, un, it's not, man, my words are messed up. <laughs> it's, it's not unusual for one guy to coach a team, but I can't imagine you got all these guys and especially at practice, right? I mean, you can't, everybody's not doing one thing. <laughs> So did, did that help as well? 1,000%. Um, and, and like I said, just his, his experience and, and his knowledge and different approach to the game, um, we, we'd always talk and throw ideas back and forth, and, and we still do. And um, always adding a second person, and he, he'll catch something that I may have missed or, or vice versa. And, and um, just having a second set of hands there, I can put a – Hey, Kersey, you're doing the power play tonight. I'm worrying about this. And good, got it. And and yeah. just separating duty. So it's like you said, it's not a full workload on on my plate. It's and it's been great. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about let's jump into your playing career now. Let's go back. Um, you cool. spent uh you 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 spent time, you played juniors in Winnipeg back in hell. That was a long time. You're old, man. Oh. No. <laughs> I, I'm older than you, so. <laughs> but uh, but so you were playing juniors in Winnipeg. You you played for the uh, the Saints, and then you went and played Division three uh, hockey with Manhattanville College. Where's that at? I should have looked that up before this. It is in 
purchase New York. So right uh, White Plains, New York, it's about half an hour from Manhattan. Okay. What, what was your decision from coming out of juniors to go play division three instead of youth sports in Canada? Um, I went on a few different visits and, and I talked to a few different teams um, throughout my, my last year of junior. So um, I really didn't know much about NCAA there. There wasn't much info out there and, or anything, but I knew some guys that I did go to U sports. And so I went on some visits and um, I wanted to go where, where I was wanted and, and felt, felt wanted and comfortable. And um, going to Manhattanville, I went there on a visit and I, I fell in love right away. They gave me the full tour of Times Square and took me to a Rangers game and um, oh, just, just the campus and, and the, uh, the whole lifestyle in New York, I, I thought it would be great. So uh, I committed there. That's tough to say no to somebody who's taking you to a Rangers game at Madison Square Garden. I, I don't I don't know that I could say no to a to a school willing to take to, to woo me with that. <laughs> so. Well, and, and the funny thing is one of my good friends was on the team. Oh um, nice. I, I grew up with uh Dale Weiss, who was on on the Rangers at the time. So I was like we we saw each other and uh, all the time. So it, it was awesome. Nice. That's cool. So you, uh, I'll jump back. I, I got ahead of myself, but you almost scored. A, you you had an eighty four point season in 08, 09 in in juniors. You were tearing it up. Well, how come the NHL contracts weren't coming your way, man? I mean, that's a lot of points you put up that year. That was your second to last year in juniors. I mean, fifty assists, thirty four goals, and elite prospects probably lying. So it's probably a hundred points. And I know that's what everybody tells me, anyways. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think I might have chiseled a few there. But, uh... <laughs> Um, but we had we had a really good team. We we were we were loaded that year, and um, I don't know. We we actually lost in the semis, but um, that that was kind of the turning point for for me and just playing with some high caliber players and getting the confidence. And um, that that was a great year, great season, and uh, I w- we should have finished it out. We were the we were the favorites, but uh, we just couldn't pull it out in playoffs. No, dang it. Is that something that you carry? No, I'm not. I'm not. No, no. no don't bring it up. <laughs> so let's go back to Manhattanville. And so, uh, so you you went four years there. What'd you study? I like asking that question to <laughs> hockey players. What what did what did you study? Because normally athletes have like the craziest things, you know. Except for Stewie, who studied didn't he study like government or something? I forgot already. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Huh? I, probably, I wouldn't be. It wouldn't surprise me with Stewie. He's, but. Um, I, I'm a major in economics, concentration in finance, and uh, I was a history minor. Oh, okay. All right. So you were kind of touching. You were getting all over the place there. That's that's good. I, I couldn't tell you what, um, why why it was like that. I think it was because all the pre old hockey guys took those same classes pretty much, and right. I pretty much had all the papers or exams. So nice. Yeah, something to do with it. Idea. Yeah. So you got really good grades, is what you're saying. I looked really smart on paper. <laughs> that's right. That's that's pretty much that's pretty much how uh, I think that's how you're supposed to do college, anyways. I mean, yeah. so, you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Exactly, exactly. So your last year was that the first year? I see you got to you were the captain your your senior year. So is that your first time wearing a letter on your jersey? No, I I actually wore an A in college for okay my sophomore and junior career but um in in junior i also wore the c and the a so okay um i kind of that's something that really kind of hits home and I, I take pride in that it's um something i i'll always cherish and and, and value yeah i mean it's, it just seems like that's kind of what you're you're destined to become i mean you're a leader you everywhere you've been pretty much so so that's 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 always cool i, I always wonder whenever i see people you know where in the sea somewhere when when did they first wear it so that's cool and then uh did you guys do anything uh in, in manhattanville did you guys win anything when when national championships anything like that no um early in the in my career there or the first couple of years we were we were nationally ranked and and we were there's a lot of good players there and um we unfortunately we we never we never put it all together once again. So I'm starting to think maybe it's me. That's the problem, but <laughs> no, no, we're not, we're not going to blame it on you. We're not going to blame it on you at all. So I don't know. I mean, 
last year, everybody, I mean, you, I'm, never mind. <laughs> I don't, even, I, I, I don't even want to get into things that, because it's just I, it's opening a can of worms and then people will turn me off and quit listening to me. So I don't I don't want that. I, I need people to listen to this. Talk. Yeah, we, we need listeners. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, so jumping in, did you have any options outside of the, the SP after you graduated before you went to Columbus or were you? No. Um, and once again, I was so unaware and not really attached to to the pro game or um, life after after college, after you graduate. And um, one day I got an email from Jerome Bouchard and then um, I kind of sat on it for a few weeks, not thinking, not knowing much. And then I actually looked at the roster and I see some, some of the ex players I played junior with are there. And I'm like, wow, these guys are really good players and they're playing pro getting paid. So um I, I owe everything to, to Jerome. Like we're still good buddies. We still talk on a weekly basis. And I'm so thankful that I, I responded to that email because uh, who knows where I'd be without that. Yeah. You almost ghosted. You're, you're saying you almost ghosted Bouchard. How about that? That's great. <laughs> but, uh, but, but no. So what is it like playing for him? I mean, that guy is like, he's, he's, even when he played, I mean, he's a high energy guy. And, and I mean, as a coach, I mean, you still see him. Like, I catch him every once in a while with the river dragons games. Cause he's still coaching in Columbus. What was it like playing under a guy like that? I loved it. Generally one of the greatest human beings I've ever met. He, he would give you the shirt off his back in a heartbeat. No questions asked. Um, and I'm not saying he was the same style of player as me, but but he respected. Um, he he liked the tough game. Clearly, his his resume speaks volumes. But um, he he probably gave me a longer leash than than I deserved than most teams would have, and and I think it paid off. Like having a coach that believes in you and has that confidence in you does tenfold. And and I think that's exactly what happened with with Jerome and I. Yeah. That that uh, so Columbus they folded, and uh, what 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 do you think whenever that team went away from the league? I mean, did you think, oh shit, maybe I don't have a roster spot anywhere? And then because Birmingham then kind of showed up shortly thereafter, and so yeah, so- there, there was a lot of talk going on about what was going to happen with um, the players from Columbus, and um, I talked to a few coaches at the same time. Actually, Kevin Kerr was in Macon, and and we talked. Um, right before, but I, I already committed to, to Birmingham. So Jamie Hicks called and it was just, you know, one door closes, one door opens. And I just wanted a, a fresh start, new city, but relatively close to the, to the South. So um, I heard nothing but good things and uh, I made the right choice. Yeah. I mean, you, you talk about being in the South. I mean, when, when you came down here, so most, all of your hockey was up North and you're from winter pig. That's what people call it anyways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I don't know that you could find a more different environment or weather climate than, than what you've done from where you grew up <laughs> to where you're at now. And I mean, are you just planning on staying in the South forever at this point? I don't think I can go back to snow again. I could not go back to a Winnipeg winter. Um, I'm so accustomed to, to golf in almost 12 years or 12 months a, a year and right. um, not not having to plug your car in or command start it to warm it up. So uh, I, I, I like it's safe to say I'm in the South for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's funny. Everybody from up North always says that. I mean, hell, Anthony Collins that I mentioned earlier, he lives in Mississippi. So I mean, it's yeah, just, exactly. nobody wants to go back up there. And, and here I am sitting here going, man, I really w- wish I had winter again for at least a week, but after a week I'd be done with it. I don't mind the South after that, you know, a week of winter I'd be cool with, but. Yeah, to see a little bit of snow, but it, it gets you got sick of it pretty quick. Yeah, and shoveling it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah but uh, so we'll jump in. So you came into Birmingham, and that eighteen nineteen year was like one for it was it was one hell of a year. I mean, the the team, and that was the year you had to see. It just seemed like everything was going right. Talk to me about that season and and that team that you were a part of. It, it was something special, and and it, and you felt it right right from the get-go uh, we had a lot of guys return we, i think we had 13 or 14 guys return that season and 
we, we were an older team. Like we were a veteran team. We had Josh Harris and myself and Taylor Dick and Dodger. And it was just, we, we all wanted to play for each other. Um, and we all wanted to win. We loved the city and we saw the direction that we were heading as an organization. Um, it, it was 20 best friends and we, we'd go out together. We beg skate together. We would do everything together. And, um, I still talk to a lot of those guys, um, keep in touch. And, um, it, that, that one hurt because we, we did really feel that, um, we, we could have won it and we were a solid team on paper and on the ice, but, um, it was one of those things that we ran out of gas too early. Yeah. It took you guys forever to lose your first game that year. And, uh, that was the record until those other guys up to 65 decided to break it last year, but Hey, you got a chance this year to break to get it back. Exactly. <laughs> but uh records are made to be broken that's what i always say mm-hmm. <laughs> but um so yeah i mean that was like i said that was a great year i'm not gonna beat a dead horse i think you I, I've, I've heard i've talked to a few guys that were on that team and and everybody says it was like a brotherhood that year and and i think that's i mean would you say that's probably a key to a team i mean you can have all the talent in the world but if everybody's not getting along you're probably not going to go far you might make the playoffs but you might not go that far in them right and that's exactly it. I, I'm telling um, a lot of these these players that are coming in that um, championships are won in the dressing room. Like you, you got to build from the the dressing room out, and and we we're really targeting good people, core value people with the right characteristics that just want to win and work for each other. Um, you don't care who scores or who gets the assist; is the the two points at the end of the night that that matter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one man's never going to win a championship. It's, it's, it's a team effort. So you also brought in the hockey guys. So you got a, you got your own little social media gang back there too, with their, with their videos and their TikTok video. And you added another one to the team. So, I mean, I'm sure those guys are probably, I don't know, they seem like an excitable group or an excited group of guys when you watch their videos on, on there. Are they kind of this, is that how they are? Are they really like that? And they're like, uh, everything you see when you're watching their Instagram and TikToks, is that how they are? So I haven't, I haven't watched them. I've heard a lot about them, um, but no, they're, they're pretty uh, quiet. New guys on the block and they didn't want to be out of see this year, but um, last year they, they were definitely uh, just happy go guys and do their business and, and leave. So, yeah. I'm excited to see where this team can go this year. I just uh, it it just looks I've, I've done I've I've put thrown a few articles out there talking about the players and it just uh, you can see I feel like uh, everybody can kind of see that that your goal this year is to not sit around the bottom. Your goal is is you're shooting for the stars to get back to what the eighteen nineteen team is. Am I wrong in saying that? Not sure. one bit. And and obviously our our whole message is we want to win. Um, we, we, we feel we've came up short in the past and haven't had the, the, the years or seasons that we wanted to, but, um, we're, we're building a team to win. We're not looking about, worrying about next year or what if it, it's, it's here and now, and, and that's the, the attitude we want. And we just want winners. Right. And I've noticed a lot of guys. One last thing is, is a lot of guys are getting, uh, they're going to ECHL camps this year. And, and so kind of talk to me about, how how you want to be somewhat of i mean because we've, i've said this a million times i know everybody says it too is 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 every the goal for everybody in the sphl is to get to the highest level they possibly can so i mean moving forward is that kind of one of your goals is to to get these guys into these camps and and uh and and maybe get it to where some of them can stick as tough as it hurts you know if you lose a couple of guys because they're definitely somebody you needed there but i mean is that kind of the in in goal for for individual <laughs> players absolutely and like uh, a lot of guys don't want to have their end game at the sphl they want to play at the highest level possible and they all want an opportunity to to see what what it's actually like um and and that's my whole belief is i want to help them i want to do my job by developing them and teaching them the, the game of hockey and and improving them so their skills so they can make it to the next level and um, and that's what 
a lot of these guys are so driven that, that we're after and they want to make that jump. So we, we want our guys to go. I'm not, I don't want to say selfishly, it looks good on us. Um, but, but it does, but does yeah. it make my life harder? Probably when I have to go replace uh, a, uh, Hayden Stewart or something like that, but I'd be gladly to do it in knowing that they're, they're sticking at the next level. Right. And it's probably not going to be as hard to find guys whenever they're sitting here and they're like, well, shit, yeah, I'll go play in Birmingham. I mean, they're, they're sending guys up and a lot of them are sticking. So I imagine it, it makes recruiting and, uh, and finding players a little bit easier if, if you build that, that culture in that locker room and around that team. Yeah. And, and that's exactly it. I, I said earlier, like we, we want the hungry guys that, that want to make that jump to the next level and the guys that are staying out and doing the extra work and, um, we, we can't just preach it. We have to show them and, and deliver. So we want our guys to go up and, and see what it's like. And then from then on, they have to make that decision if they want to go back up or if they want to stay in one spot. So we're going to present every opportunity um, that they're awarded. Right. Awesome. So that's it. That's all I really got. Is there anything that you wanted to add? Did I miss anything? I mean, do you, you got you got anything probably, you wanted to add? Probably a lot. <laughs> I forgot to take, hey, this fishing thing, I think instead of me taking you fishing, you have a connection with a guy who has a guide service up in uh, Ontario. And I mean, maybe, maybe you should use that connection to get me up there and we go fishing with him, right? Uh, I know exactly who you're talking about. And uh, you guys kind of have the same facial hair right now. Last time I've seen. So are you trying to look like him or what? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. I'm, I'm trying to, everybody likes him, but I, I'm never going to be, I'm never going to be him. I'm never going to, I mean, the guy, the guy had like, he was like a man rocket out there on the ice, you know, he, so, I mean, that's not going to be me. I got, I got a old gray. I'm getting fat. You know, it's not going to work for me, but yeah, no. Well, I, I'd love to take you. I'd love to go up there too. I've, I've never been where, where he is, but uh, we should plan a trip one day. We should go ice yeah, fishing. Definitely. That's we should definitely. Ice yeah. I've, I've never been ice fishing. So yeah, see, that's what we got to do. We'll do that. Well, ice fishing. I, I don't know. We both kind of got things going on during ice fishing season. We need an all-star break. Yeah, I'll get a hold of the commissioner and I'll see if we can get, if we can get an all-star break going and that, that'll be when we can set it up. for. I like it. Work on it. Yeah, definitely. That's my, that's my homework. So, mm -hmm. But anyways, man, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, I wish you the best of the luck this year and the whole team. And, and I look forward to seeing where this team can go moving forward and and uh yeah that that's all i really got man thank you no well, thank you james appreciate it we'll talk soon absolutely well there you have it that's the head coach of the birmingham bulls craig simchuk he uh he's building a roster i'll tell you that he's building a roster this year if you, if you want to kind of learn more in depth about it as you guys know i cover the bulls that's 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 one of the things i do for field pass is in, in, and I'm a little more in the know with Bulls things, and I'm sure some of you guys hate that sometimes because you're not Bulls fans, but I try to be in the know with all of them, but it's impossible not to be more in the know with the team that I'm around all the time. But uh, so anyways, well, I said all that to say this, if you want to know more about the roster, there's a couple of articles up on fieldpasshockey.com. I I think I have all but uh, the most recent signing uh, up on there. And it's kind of kind of let you know a little bit about each of the guys and, and what they're capable of. And I stole quotes from uh, from the coach and whatnot and, and how they feel about a few of the players. And it's just, uh, like I said, they're building a roster. You can definitely see from this roster that it is a different kind of team than we have seen the Bulls in the past few seasons. And – it's, it's going to be exciting to see. I, there, there's a lot of things that get me really excited for this season, and it's not just Bulls hockey. I mean, there's just so many changes. I mean, there's you got you got new head coaches. You got a new head coach in Macon. I'm excited to see where Nick Nieder can take that. You got Clark in Knoxville, and, I mean, he got I – mean, I'm excited to see if he can carry that tradition that Knoxville just – they, they've never missed the playoffs ever in the history of the SPHL, and, and, and I'm interested to see – you know, new coaches. I, I don't doubt him. It's just, it's going to be exciting. Vermilion County's got another coach and, and uh, you know, teams like Birmingham, Vermilion County and Macon, they really have nowhere to go, but up, right. They were the three teams that missed out in the playoffs last year. So, I mean, they, they could finish worse record wise this year, but technically they have nowhere to go, but up the, 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 
And, and it's going to be exciting to see how that goes and to see where these other teams are, you know, I mean, Peoria is not going away. They're definitely not going to go away. They're coming off of a championship season. I, they're always in the mix, so they're going to be good this year. Huntsville's never going to go away. I mean, they, they're, they're bringing back, they lost a few guys, but, and their goalie just got called a Hunter Vorba. Just, he's going to an ECHL camp. I just seen the other day, I believe Kalamazoo. And so, if he sticks up there, maybe Huntsville. That these are the things that, are, that, that interest me. If some of these guys make the team out of camp, who's Huntsville going to have? That was their that was their guy last year, but they're not going away. I mean, they're they're bringing back Piacentini. They're bringing back uh, Jacob Barber. I mean, you're just they're not going away. And then Quad City last year was was an amazing year for that team as a franchise. They they did great things and. They put on a heck of a playoff series with Peoria. And so, I mean, where are they going to go from here? They, 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 everybody has nowhere to go but up except for Peoria, I guess is the best way to put it. But technically, you win back to back championships that's going up still, right? So we're going to say no, nobody, the, the, everybody can go up. I guess there's nowhere to go. They can go down. So what I just said makes absolutely no sense. So just don't listen to my nonsense. But anyways, I mean, this just it's, it's great. Roanoke last year. I mean, they, they, they were that, they were that story. They came in as the lowest seed, made it all the way to the finals. They took down one and two. They just couldn't take down three. Where are they going to go this year? They, who's going to be the captain? I mean, I see they're bringing back a lot of their core, and in Evansville, and where where are they going to be at? They were kind of they were kind of dwindling down there in, in in the bottom of the rankings all year, and then came on, and then they just kind of hit a brick wall in the playoffs. But that's still a team that you see some of these guys that that are still on that team that whenever Evansville was making a run for it before everything got shut down because of COVID. So can Evansville get back to that? It's just I don't know. If you guys aren't excited for this season, I, I don't know who is. I, I I don't know what will excite you. I mean, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. That that's all I have to say. And I can't wait for October to get here. I I, I love October for so many different reasons. I got a, a bunch of them. That's on my wedding anniversary. That's one. Yeah, I, I got to throw that in there. Halloween. I'm a total Halloween nerd. Just so you guys know. I just went to Spirit Halloween uh, last weekend and spent entirely too much money to put a bunch of stuff in my front yard to try and scare the crap out of kids before I give them a bunch of candy. But And I, I even bought a Halloween costume. I have not worn a Halloween costume, I think, since I was maybe like 12 or 13 years old. I might be lying. I, there may have been one in between there, but I don't know. I'm excited about Halloween, and that's how October ends. But in the middle, hockey starts. I mean – come on now. I mean, that's, that's, it's the best month. If October is the best month, I feel like it's, it, it's when hockey begins and everybody should be pumped up. We're here at the end of September camps are getting ready to ramp up. I know a lot of teams are already doing free agent camps and, or have already done free agent camps. And I don't know, I, I can smell the hockey in the air, even though the air's not crisp and cool in the South, you can still smell the hockey in the air. Believe me, I wouldn't lie to you. I don't know what hockey smells like. I don't know. I guess if you've been down close to the bench, it doesn't smell very pleasant. But, hey, that's because they're all working their asses, our butts off on the ice. You know, I mean, that's what happens. <laughs> but, uh, but so I don't know. What else we got to talk about? So let's talk a little NHL. I never talk NHL other than whenever I talk about how I'm a Colorado Avalanche fan. They won the Stanley Cup last year, and I just always feel like I need to tell everybody that because fans like to brag and – that's what I'm here for. And nobody else is here to take the mic away from me and be like, let's move on. But there was some big things in the NHL that just dropped down here in the recent and the last couple of days. So Zadino Charas, he's finally retiring after playing for a million years. And a uh, fun fact about that is, is now with his retirement, there isn't a single team a player in the NHL that has lost to the Toronto Maple Leafs in the playoffs. Sorry guys. I know Maple Leafs fans, that sucks, but, I mean, you got to have fun with something like that every once in a while. Then P.K. Subban, great, great defenseman. He had a rough couple of last few years, but I think that the Devils kind of had a rough couple of years when he got there. He's gone. And then uh, the Iron Man, who's uh, Keith Yandel, he announced his retirement. And so he's – the Iron Man streak came to an end last year already anyways, and everybody's already expecting Phil Kessel to – take that away this year who's going to go play in vegas but who knows vegas might trade him before the season because vegas trades everybody 
that's it. That's about all I'm going to talk about on the NHL. But I just feel like that's, I mean, these are some milestone names, you know, especially when you see Chara's gone, you know, and Chara, Yandel, Subban. I mean, a lot of these guys that have just been names that you see around the league forever, they're, they're, they're gone just like that. And it was all in like a matter of, I, I feel like 24 hours or maybe all the same day. I don't remember the day Yandel officially announced his retirement, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure Subban and Chara did it the same day, just like that. So, I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting. There's a lot of greats retiring from hockey, and uh, I mean, you got you got guys in the SPHL too. I believe Jason Price has retired, been in the league forever. He was uh, probably the best defenseman in the league last year. I mean, statistically, it's it's tough to deny that. And then uh, Nolan Kaiser, another great in the league, staple in the SPHL, gone. Travis Armstrong retired. I mean, there's a lot of guys. There's this year it, across the board in. I feel like we're going to see some new faces and there's going to be some new names that are going to be staples around the league. And I don't know. I mean, when Hageman leaves all you guys that hate on him and call him the turtle man, you're going to have to find somebody else to hate. Fortunately, to the best of my knowledge, he's still going to be a riverman this year. So you guys can still hate on him and I can still tell you guys how good of a hockey player he is. And you can listen to the interview and see that he's a pretty cool dude too. But you got to go back into the archives of inside the SPHL to find that. But, um, but yeah, I think I'm just rambling now. I don't really have anything else. I, uh, I will be back next week. I do. I ha I can give you that promise. There will be a podcast next week. So we're, we're getting back into some consistency and, um, that's about it. Just make sure, uh, make sure out there in, the YouTube sphere, the internet sphere and everything, you know, make sure you guys are liking our, uh, like our YouTube page. I say this all the time, follow our YouTube page, leave us comments, leave me a comment down here. I ask you guys all the time, leave me comments. I don't know. Do you turn it off once the interview has gone and you never actually hear me ask you this, or does nobody really have any kind of input? I mean, tell me if you hate me, tell me if you love it, tell me who you want to see bring on brought on as a guest. I'm always open to suggestions. I mean, you guys are the one reason I'm here. I'm here to bring people to you for great conversation. So if there's a player out there that I haven't gotten around to, or even a player that I have talked to last year, throw it in the comments. If you're not watching on YouTube and you're watching on field pass hockey, which you can watch the YouTube video on our website too. You don't even have to go to YouTube. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, if you're listening to it on the app, anything, there's not really a spot for you to leave comments, so I got a solution for you. Hit me up on Twitter, at FPH Bulls. Say something. I usually share – well, I don't usually. I always share the link on my Twitter. Field Pass always shares uh, sh or shares the link to the podcast. Drop a comment in there. I mean, just – I want to hear from you guys. I want this season to be focused on what you guys want to hear. If you want me to quit talking so much – Tell me to quit talking so much. I can't promise that that's going to happen because I really love the sound of my voice. But I don't know. I don't know. Just help me out here. Help me out. Tell me what you want to see moving forward for this new season as we get ramped up. And I will do my best to accommodate you. I promise I will listen. I will read the comments. And I don't care if you have bad things to say. I, it's all right. I've been called worse. I've been called worse than anything that you guys can call me. I don't know. I might not say that. Somebody might come up with some something pretty creative, but hell, anything, anything helps. Anything helps. Good, bad, ugly, whatever. But that's it. That's it for me. I will see you guys back next week. I will have another guest to talk hockey. You won't have to just listen to me. It's going to be great. And make sure that you guys are going to fieldpasshockey.com for all your off season and all your during season content in minor league hockey. I've said it before. We got AHL, ECHL, and SPHL. We're covering it all. So we're your one-stop shop. You don't have to go anywhere else. So that's it. Enough said. Until next time. You've been listening to the Inside the SPHL podcast. Got a topic you'd like discussed? Follow James on Twitter at FPH Bulls. For the latest news on the SPHL and the rest of minor league hockey, download the Field Pass Hockey app, now available in the Apple and Android app stores.